Rising costs like rent, insurance, power bills, wages and interest rates are crippling Australian small business owners. Many have struggled to make ends meet this year and thousands have gone under. ASIC's annual insolvency data released in July shows that more than 11,000 companies entered external administration for the first time in the recent financial year. Well, joining me now to discuss these pressures is COSBOA Chief Executive Luke Arkestrat. Luke, thanks for your time. Uh, you've got a report out today outlining some of these challenges. Let's start with the rising cost of doing business. How tough is it right now for small business owners? Thanks for having me. Look, most of the small businesses we canvassed, and over 2,000 were interviewed for this survey, found that this is the toughest operating environment in recent memory. That cost of doing business, input costs, materials, you know, a complex industrial relations system, energy, rent and insurance, it really is a perfect storm. And that storm is battering our small business owners. One third of them are not paying themselves and one quarter of them are using their own personal savings to support their business. So it's just a stark reminder, small businesses, quite different to large enterprise, have their own unique challenges and are really feeling the pinch during this cost of doing business crisis. Yeah, I said in the intro, ASIC stats show uh, insolvencies basically at record highs in the recent financial year. Do you expect things to get worse over the next few months? Could we see insolvencies uh, get even worse and accelerate? Look, unfortunately, we feel that will be the case. If you look at the latest data from Creditor Watch, they predict that that exit rate or that failure rate for businesses will get worse before it gets better. And I think what's really important to note here uh, is, of course, we need to recognise the sombre news around uh, you know, decade high insolvencies, but behind every statistic is actually a family, you know, a small business, potentially a mum and dad who've mortgaged the house. Uh, they've potentially had their, their livelihood taken away from them. They've worked for a significant period of their life. Uh, to support their enterprise. So there's a family behind every statistic that has implications for jobs and has implications for productivity as well. We know that without you know, a thriving small business sector, we'll see higher prices, uh, reduced competition, and that's only going to be bad news uh, for the RBA as they seek to get inflation back under control. You mentioned industrial relations a minute ago. I mean, how difficult is it for small business owners right now to keep on top of all the changing laws and changing regulations? Look, it's extremely difficult. If you take a typical small business, they might be a two or three person outfit. You know, the small business owner is the head of marketing, is the head of operations and is the head of HR. And when you see really complex IR changes coming through, you know, a three page, 15 factor test of what is a casual worker. Uh, when you see things like a right to disconnect being introduced, which requires, you know, compliance, you need to get advice on that, you potentially need to make changes. There is just a raft of new obligations and small businesses don't necessarily have that internal support, that specialised HR support. So what does that mean? It means it's the small business owner seeking to grapple with those changes that's time away from their business, potentially time away from their family. And unfortunately, a lot of those changes that have been made, we don't see them supporting small business and we don't see them supporting productivity. So we need a better I system, IR system, one that's fit for purpose and one that's flexible, but most importantly, one that can actually be understood uh, and simplified uh, and made as workable as possible for two and a half million small businesses. Yeah, look, it's it sounds like a stressful time. Uh, what about finding new employees and, and access to skills, Luke? Is that, is that a difficult challenge as well right now, actually finding people to, to work for you? Yeah, look, it absolutely is. We need to find the right people at the right place at the right time. You know, when we're talking about skilled migration, we need to make sure that that is a program uh, that works for businesses of all sizes. You know, small businesses, be they hairdressers or in the construction sector, you know, they have labour requirements as well. And we need to be really careful uh, that we're not pricing out some of these small businesses from using um, our skilled migration system. You know, look, Jobs and Skills Australia uh, is doing some really good work to make sure that different industries have their workforce plans. But certainly we need to encourage more people uh, into trades, into apprenticeships, and not just into apprenticeships, but actually retaining them. We need to really improve that completion rate. We have a bit of an issue in Australia around people actually finishing um, you know, their apprenticeship, and that really is the future for a lot of workers in small business. And I think more to the point, are we encouraging the next wave of entrepreneurs? Are we as a country making it easier rather than harder to actually start, run and maintain a small business. So it's not just, I suppose, small business workers, but also small business owners and entrepreneurs, making sure that those policy settings are right, that the tax settings are right, to really make sure that that risk to reward ratio uh, works for them and encourages and incentivizes innovation.
One thing we've also noticed the past few years has been an increase in cyber attacks. I mean, are small businesses on the whole prepared for this sort of stuff? Look, unfortunately, small businesses still have a long way to go when it comes to understanding the ever-present danger of a cyber attack. And we're really working hard on this. We're rolling out Cyber Wardens, which is a free online program to help small businesses get their head around what are four or five, not 50, not 60, but four or five practical tips they can take on board to really improve their cyber resilience. So things like password management, device management, uh, patch management as well, making sure your systems are being updated, making sure that your staff are actually um, abiding by good cyber hygiene uh, and routine. So look, I think a lot of us in the community think, you know, scams and hacks um, really are targeted towards the large end of town or the big end of town. Luke, but in reality, we know thank that you. there is a great approach. Thanks very much, Luke, Thank for coming you. on the show.